Welcome to Autopilot's training video series designed to help you get the most from your system. This video will cover the WashPilot Tunnel Controller. Now, let's begin. The WashPilot Tunnel Controller utilizes a web-based interface for programming. You'll want to go ahead and access your WashPilot login screen. If you don't already have this set up in your system, you may need to contact Autopilot Technical Support. You can connect to the WashPilot by either connecting a monitor, keyboard, and mouse directly to the tunnel controller or by using a Network Cat 5 cable connected to any local computer that's on your network. Once your WashPilot login screen is displayed, go ahead and enter your username and password to begin. In the WashPilot tunnel controller, we'll run through the main system options. On the main menu, the general page includes your site information. You can update or modify this information as necessary. You also have a link for system diagnostics. This screen will display diagnostic information in regards to the communication with your relay boards. Depending on how many relay boards you have in your tunnel controller system, you may see more or less entries in this window. If you have a push button station, you'll also see an option for that. If you are having any problems with your tunnel controller, the technical support may want you to access this screen and relay to them the information that's provided here. At the bottom of the window, you'll also be able to see your network communication status. This wash pilot is currently communicating correctly. We'll return back to the general page and take a look at the queue status. This is a list of all the washes currently in the wash pilot queue. You'll see washes that have not yet gone through the wash listed at the top. You'll see any washes that have been completed listed under the blue line for completed. Please note that this screen does update automatically. To return back to our wash pilot, simply click the back arrow in your internet browser. At the bottom of the general page, you'll also see a page for date and time. This is how you set the current date and time for your controller. If you've made any changes in this window, be sure to click the Save Changes button. Please note, any changes made to your wash pilot do take effect immediately. We'll go to the page for the input switches. These are all the switches for your tunnel controller. To edit any switch, click the wrench in the Edit column. You'll be able to see the settings for each of your available input switches. If you're not sure what information to enter in this window, you can also refer to the pilot training. This is available on the right-hand side of your screen and provides detailed information about the settings provided in that window. If you've made any changes in the window, be sure to click the Save button. If you do not want any changes to take effect, you can always click Return to List and the system will return without saving. From this window, you'll see the programs for all of your input switches, including your Enter switch, your Pulse switch, tire switch and any others that you may have. We'll click on the Users page to see a list of all available users for this tunnel controller. We can click the wrench in the Edit column to, to adjust any of these settings. From here you can specify the user ID, the first and last name of this user, their password. If they are a salesperson you can simply check the box and enter their initials and their profit pilot ID. At the bottom you have a list of access permissions. You'll want to use the drop down menu to display your list of options. If you'd like to grant access to this user just simply choose the correct option. When all changes to your users have been made, click the save and return to list. The receipt printer page will configure a receipt printer attached to your system. Full service car washes will generally utilize a receipt printer that is attached to a push button station. The two together will function as a greeter station. As customers pull into the car wash lot, their wash will be entered on the push button station and a receipt printed. This receipt will have a barcode on it that can be scanned in the lobby area for payment. A code will be printed on the receipt as well so the correct wash can be queued up in the controller when the car is present. If you'd like to make any changes to your receipt printer, you'll want to do it here in this window. Please note at the bottom of the window you'll see options to print your tax amount on your receipt, the salesperson's information, a barcode, and also to cut the paper. When complete, click Save Changes. The Controller Setup page includes specific information for your controller. This information is generally pre-programmed on your controller when it ships from Autopilot. You don't want to change any information in this window unless you're instructed to do so by Autopilot Technical Support. Next we'll go to the Relays. 
These are all of the relays that are available in your tunnel controller. At the top are special relays such as anti-collision, auto shutoff, and roller up. We'll click the wrench in the edit column to see an example of the anti-collision restart relay. We can see the settings displayed here. We can also see that this relay is shared with the conveyor start. Your wash pilot does enable you to put multiple programs on one relay. The next section is all of your standard relays. These tie directly to the equipment in your tunnel. We'll click the wrench to see an example of roller up. The relay program details will give you detailed information about this relay. Relay number three, the name of our relay, and the type of relay it's standard. The program mode specifies whether or not this relay will turn on automatically with the default wash or only with the wash that you've programmed it for. The turn on distance will be entered in this field. Your output profile includes the entire vehicle, the front of vehicle, or just the rear of the vehicle. You can also enter an output profile modifier. If your output profile is set to the entire vehicle, then your relay will turn on for the entire vehicle and will stay on for this number of pulses past the rear edge of the vehicle. If your output profile was set to the front of the vehicle, then the relay will turn on at the front edge of the vehicle and it'll stay on for this number of pulses. If your output profile is set to the rear of vehicle, then the relay will turn on at the rear edge of the vehicle and stay on for the number of pulses that you enter here. The interlock level determines how the relay will respond when the conveyor is stopped and when this relay is on. If you set it to not interlocked, the relay will stay on even if your conveyor has stopped. If you set it to no delay, the relay will turn off when the conveyor is stopped and turn on just as soon as the conveyor is turned back on. If you enter a delay, the relay will turn off when the conveyor is stopped and then turn back on after the number of seconds delay that you enter. The delay is frequently used for equipment such as blowers that you may want to stagger their restart if your conveyor has stopped. You'll want to enter a program for each of the relays in your tunnel. Remember, this controls how all of the equipment in the tunnel will respond. Next, we'll take a look at your button setup. This is where you create all of your different washes and services. To add a new program, simply click the Add New Program button. We'll go ahead and click the wrench to edit our existing program. This program will control all of the equipment that will turn off or on for the $10 wash. We'll enter the type of wash from our type drop-down box and enter the name of this wash. We'll also want to enter a price of this wash. The Profit Pilot ID should match the corresponding SKU number that has been entered in your Profit Pilot system. This is how the Profit Pilot system will sync the transactions together. Again, the Profit Pilot ID should match the SKU number that's set up in the items in your Profit Pilot. As we scroll down in the window, we'll see a list of all of our available relays. If this relay should turn on with our $10 wash, you'll simply want to click the box. If a box is not clicked, the relay will not be activated for the wash. You'll need to continue and make a program for each of the washes that you're going to offer at your facility. You'll also create a program for each of your different services. Again, the same information applies and you'll simply want to check the box for your additional services that should trigger with your wash. And finally, you can also create programs for any overrides or special functions. We'll take a look at the conveyor start. We'll see that when this program is activated, it will simply start the conveyor. You can create as many overrides as necessary, and remember that overrides can also be displayed directly on your Profit Pilot system on the Tunnel tab. The special relays at the bottom will perform functions such as advancing the stack, deleting one car, all cars, or just the first car in the stack. You'll also have an Enter button that is necessary on your Push Button Station to be used in combination with entering washes. You also have the Stations window, and from here you can assign different programs to a keypad. If we click the Edit Wrench, we'll be able to see an existing program. This is how you program the individual buttons on a Push Button Station. You'll need to do this for the push button that's included with your system and that is normally mounted at the entrance of the tunnel. If you're a full service wash and you're using a push button station for a greeter, you'll also need to make a keypad layout the greeter will use to select washes and services for the customer. You can see here your station button assignments where you can simply click the drop down list. From the list, choose the item that you want to have assigned to button number one. You'll do this for all 22 buttons. 
When you've assigned all of your items to buttons, you'll want to be sure and click the Save and Return to List to save it. The Wash Pilot does include some basic reporting. You can generate a period comparison, a period detail, or a line item report. Simply choose the report that you'd like to generate, choose your date and time, and then click Create Report. Your report information will automatically be displayed on the screen. You can also print this report by clicking Print from your Internet Browser window. And finally, when you are done programming your WashPilot Tunnel Controller, you'll want to click the Log Out button. This will return you back to the WashPilot login screen. And that concludes the overview of the WashPilot Tunnel Controller. If you require more information on any of the specific settings in your Tunnel Controller, you'll want to contact Autopilot Technical Support or your local distributor. We hope you found the information helpful and informative.